There we go. Oh, shoot. I did the wrong thing. Dang it. Well, we'll just try this. Okay. All right. There we go. See, first first little hiccup already, but that's okay. We're going to do just fine. So welcome to the AmeriCorps Connections podcast, um, where we catch up with AmeriCorps alumni to reflect on their service year, their service term and learn what they're up to now. Um, we learn about and hear about all the twists and turns the service year provides to get us to be exactly where we are now. Um, I'm Nikki Fiacco, and I'm a proud AmeriCorps alumni from Volunteer Maryland. While my service year was certainly impactful and important and impacted my community, the skills I learned and the value of networking and connecting were my really my biggest takeaways. So I wanted to keep those connections going and grow the, my network within the AmeriCorps alumni field. Um, you know, we're 1.2 million alumni strong, and I may only be able to interview a fraction or a fraction of a fraction, or a fraction of a fraction of those folks, but I think it's still worth the effort. Um, so before I introduce our next guest, um, I do want to give a shout out, like always, to Dan Medivere from Time and Money Productions. He provides hosting and production consulting. In fact, he just checked on me yesterday, and he's like, I haven't heard from you a while. You're doing really well. Like, do you need anything? So I was like, yes. Um, so he provides me a, a shoulder to cry on when I don't know how to edit my videos. Um, and he's also an AmeriCorps alumni and he served with NCCC. So Dan, thank you for all your support. And he's the reason why this podcast is on all the uh, podcast apps, like for realsies. So today I'm excited to be connecting with Addie Lipson, a Reading Corps and City Year alumni. Um, after growing up in Connecticut, City Year sent her to Milwaukee. <laughs> So Connecticut to Milwaukee. Um, this is going to be a great story. That was really the first time she was in a city like that before. Um, and um, da -da -da, first time in the city. And um, during her city year, her interest in union organizing really peaked and her an HR specialist was born. <laughs> and I will say, Addie, one of the funniest things and the greatest things that you, you've said on our pre-interview was that um, AmeriCorps teaches you how to give a shit. <laughs> so yes, I definitely yes. want to go there. And also you were introduced to me through, was it Christina? Um, no, Dana Brazelli down Dana in- Dana Brazelli, that's Dana right. That, yeah, so this is how this, you know, these conversations um, grow. So yeah. anyways, Addie, tell us about your service year. Like why the heck, how the heck did you get Ranged into the wrangled into this. Well, so I I grew up in Connecticut, and all of my family left while I was still in undergrad. So I had finally finished my degree, and I realized that if I didn't leave Connecticut right at that moment, I would be stuck there because I'd have to mm. put roots down to survive. And I just didn't like the state. Everything was very spread out. It was hard to like build meaningful relationships, stuff like that. So, so like your whole family, like your, your, um, nuclear family, everybody's just like, we're done. Yeah. Well, my mom, brother, and I were in Connecticut and then my brother was the first to move for work. Okay. And then my mom was like, yeah, I don't like Connecticut that much. So they all left and I was, I had one or two years left of school and I was like, okay, there's no reason for me to stay here. Wow. So I, I applied to AmeriCorps because I was like, okay. I want to go somewhere, but I want to have a guaranteed job when I show up. Mm. And I looked at the education stipend. I looked at all of the education partners because I just finished up a degree in journalism and hard to get a job, hard to get paid well during that job. So I was like looking around and I said, you know, I don't really know what I want to do with, with this degree. I might as well be in service or like be useful mm -hmm while I try to figure that out instead of just sitting in Connecticut where I hate it. Um, that is really um, intrinsic though. I mean, I mean, um, what am I trying to say? It's just self-knowing. I think yeah. like I'm going to put myself to use while I'm trying to figure this out. I don't think a lot of people do that, right? Like we're sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like it's hard for us to make a decision because probably because cultures like we well, went to college and now get a job with your degree. And even if yeah. it's hard, continue to look for a job and in, in your field and you're like, okay, I'm going to go do something while I'm figuring this out. Well, for, for me, I just feel a lot of like internal friction whenever I perceive myself as sedentary. 
Mm. Like when I was in high school, I was, I had my home high school uh, in, in my hometown. And then I was on a bus to Hartford, Connecticut for jazz guitar school where I was there until five o'clock every night. Oh, wow. And it was just, I was just growing up to just never really sit still. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know what the next move was. I said, okay, I want to do something while I figure out what's going on. And it turned out being a life altering decision for me. It usually is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm so, finding a theme in these interviews. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I applied and they asked me where I wanted to serve. And they, they had like a long list of things and I was like, I just want to get out of Connecticut and then make the most from there. So I clicked send me anywhere. And I got an email like two or three weeks later saying, okay, we're sending you to Milwaukee after I did like an interview process. And my reaction was, I've never heard of this place. It sounds perfect. So, so I looked it up on Wikipedia oh, and awesome. I'm like, oh, they have beer. I'm going to have a great time. <laughs> like, let's go. I love that. Pre- yeah. rec- pre- prerequisite for Addy, beer. Yeah. I love that. I mean, after this interview, I'm going to open up an IPA and finish up my Sunday. <laughs> yeah. And what I found, like at first it was just like a, a strange curiosity from being young, but I got more and more into the history of how Milwaukee was developed. And it's like a whole city mm-hmm. built by beer barons and there's multifamily housing everywhere. Like I'm in a quadplex because they wanted to put as many brewers in one space as possible. So for the past over a hundred years, Milwaukee has been a center of industry and the workers have been here. So it's a really interesting place to be involved in community, especially when it comes to HR. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I got here, loved it. I finished up one year and I said, hey, let's do a second one. So I did that and then I just figured it out from there. Now city year members are in schools. Is that right? So did you do like- supporting um students and stuff right yep I was in a third grade classroom in Milwaukee's north side Mm -hmm. and what was what was your experience what was a day in a life of city year member serving in would you say the third quad in in third grade we we were in elementary school so we had uh third through uh fifth graders Mm -hmm. and um it was it was interesting city year the first the first impression of a lot of city year members is it's a cult and in a lot of ways they're right the, but, the red jackets um, did you do yeah, the exercises i did the exercises i so uh when <laughs> side story we were on a work retreat um to learn all the city year chants and everything uh when we did that part of the retreat i was at the hospital because i had a medical problem then i come back from the hospital and we're all performing this chant that i don't know and I'm in a field, everyone is in like a grid standing, they're doing dance moves and I'm looking around like, what happened? I was gone for two hours. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it, it, it was the first time I really saw community because it's hard, mm-hmm, yeah. I found it very hard to find that in Connecticut because it's just very spread out. And I was gonna say like, I think, um, you know, to give props to City Year, right? Of course. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that some of the the de- the development in the the we'll just call it teamwork to te- you know get like do really creates a, a community yeah. and in mm-hmm. my experience of of running AmeriCorps program I was director of Volunteer Maryland for a few years that first couple of weeks in service is when you really really want to bind the cohort together mm-hmm. so that um, they feel like they are connected to your program, especially when you send them out into the field and they're more out in the field than they are with the, with the core AmeriCorps program. So Mm -hmm. um, I think if we're all doing dance moves or exercise moves, or we all have the same jacket or we're all talking the same way, I will say, so my, I didn't know I was doing an AmeriCorps year. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just getting hired by my site to work as a person working at a park. And so when I went into- Intern plus. Yeah, exactly. And so when I went into service, the first two weeks training and there was a bunch of other people there. I'm like, I don't understand who you are. like, why, what is happening? And then we did the AmeriCorps um, pledge. And that's when I kind of was like, what am I signed up for? <laughs> but like, it was life altering. Allegiance? I didn't know. <laughs> but it, as you said in the beginning, it was life altering. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is, these are my yeah. people. So and you did the city or, and oh, go ahead. 
many years down the line, now that I'm established in HR, I pull up that city year handbook at least once a quarter. Because awesome. as I continue to learn new vocabulary in HR, because there's a new thought of HR that's very anthropological when it comes to culture building. And that handbook every year is just like an updated Bible for me because it talks about like the core parts of the culture and there's things that bring them together, founding stories, and just everything is so imbued in these values. And if you put your heart into City Year, those values come with you. Oh, that is City Year. Do you hear that? (laughs) Do you hear that? That's, that's beautiful. Well, one of the, one of the uh, core values was commitment to a cause greater than self. Mm. And when I first got my job at this company where I'm the head of HR um, at the company, not the parent company that owns us, but this one, I'm that. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I got to the company and service to a cause greater than self. Like I was able to look around and say, okay, a lot of work needs to be done for these workers to have a better place to work. And it it carried with me. And also the idea of like community building is is Mm -hmm. if you pay attention, it's a masterclass in how to have a really fun workplace. That's so cool. That's just such an amazing reflection and so important. I mean, one of the things that I'm, I'm involved in or I know about is um, employee volunteering and like employee, the purpose and the belief in your organization or the company that you work for, that they actually do care about you and your community and the work that you do is so, so important. And you can't fake that stuff. You just, yeah, you can't like it. Employees are like, yeah, whatever, you know, like when they're like, go out and serve your community, we have a volunteer program, but it's like, you get four hours, you know, once a month and good luck, you can find whatever organization rather than like wrapping their arms around them and saying, let's go out together and volunteer together. Mm -hmm. And there's a time and a place for both of them. Mm -hmm. And there's what, what AmeriCorps taught me was that there's so many creative ways to impact community. Like, yes, we were serving in schools, but our schools also hosted as a, like we, we ran a monthly food drive with hunger task force and we had clothing drives and we had all these things going on and uh, the United Way was there. We partnered with them to work with aldermen to try to get the roads around the school safer. And it was like, okay, yes, this is a school, but this could also be like a, a incubator for change. Mm. Why couldn't a business be that? Ooh, let's go there. Like we spend over a third of our lives making money for other people and a lot of times, like these toxic workplaces, especially in this very turbulent employment market, you you feel the churn and burn. Mm. And employees say like, oh, I feel treated like a number. And when, when that's said, it's very immeasurable. But you look at the spreadsheets, like when are people getting burnt out? Why are they being burnt out? And you can start to make all these inferences to make that better community. Like, oh, mm-hmm. this group of employees feels disenfranchised for this reason. Or there's an opportunity here to find a very simple way to make people feel appreciated. Kind of mm-hmm. like in AmeriCorps, where they're like, okay, you get to throw on an appreciation event, you get no funding, yes. make it work. And, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and it I sucked at that. the time, but you learn how to do miracles because the people yes. that you enter the workforce with haven't largely been through a same, like very intense professional development experience. Mm -hmm. We have to work side by side with people that are just completely dissimilar to you. Mm -hmm. And I, the the most diverse teams I ever worked with was in AmeriCorps, especially City Year. And that gave me like these intercultural competencies that you don't get in Connecticut suburbs. So (laughs) it's it's just an incubator for how to make a good company. Mm -hmm. And it helps that they have like a new wave of employees every year because they can say, okay, what didn't work last year? Let's Mm -hmm. get rid of that. Or what Mm -hmm. needs, what's a good opportunity? What new funders do we have? So it's it's just a little incubator. Mm -hmm. Enough rambling about the employee handbook at City Year. No, I I mean that those are the kinds of things that I think is really important that I would I I love pulling out those those pieces because Mm -hmm. I have my volunteer Maryland binder somewhere around here as well you know when doing projects I'm like how do I do this you know and to your point where it's like put on this recognition event and you don't have a budget 
you know, then you start to learn the skill of asking people for things. You know, mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many things I asked for. I got paint, I got people, I got, you know, I got so many things simply because um, what you said, what is it? What what did you say? Service over cause? Service what is- over cause greater than self. Right. Because when I was going out and asking for things, it wasn't like for Nikki, it was for the project that was going to beautify mm-hmm. the school or fix up this or, or whatever, educate folks or whatever. So, um, so we kind of went into what you're, you're up to now. So after your service year, did you go back to school? Um, or I did it. The, the second year of AmeriCorps, I got my first master's in social justice and community organizing. Because I had just gotten that fresh Siegel Award and I searched through the partner schools and I was like, this is cheap and I could do it in a year. I'm in. That's so (laughs) cool. I don't even care what it's like. So (laughs) yeah. And it was it was a great program that City Year opened me up to, and I got to go with no money out of pocket aside from the award and scholarships. And I had professors that were doing crazy shit. Like there was one guy that was organizing in Catalonia. There was another one that's been working with Syrian refugees, a, a third one that has like a whole like people of color journalism publication going on in the Twin Cities. And I was like, oh, people are doing wild things. Why can't they do that in a company, you know? Mm. So I don't know. It, it gave me this very skewed outlook to HR, traditionally speaking. Yeah. Where it's like, instead of, what's the the balance of what's best for the company what's best for the employee it's how do we build community and then make sure that everything else follows from there so how do you do that in your work well because you are now a focus group in uh city year you get these like five kids that maybe they knew each other from the year before but given how mobile a lot of the student population is they're probably all strangers and over the course of a year you need to have them be best friends but also have them learn and Mm -hmm. perform and a lot of that comes from the culture building where there, there's like um, this idea of the five phases of team development mm. where it's like forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourning. And a lot of the, the students that I was working with got stuck on the storming part where there's that internal fighting. And as an AmeriCorps member, you're like, oh shit, I have a very limited time to make an impact with no resources. So you learn to mediate and you learn Mm -hmm. to have these people that at first hated each other to like be encouraging each other to succeed. Now as a business leader, that's great because a lot of people complain that leadership, they're not in touch, Mm -hmm. they're distant, they are self-serving or they serve the company. But like when someone goes out of your way to serve you and like make sure that divides are bridged to make sure that the company is succeeding and they're succeeding it Mm -hmm. changes narratives and it changes culture and how do you show up like that in in the work that you're doing now or how do you encourage leaders listening i feel (laughs) i i have an ex-fiance that was uh, a social worker and a lot of days i walk into my office and i get on the phone i feel just like that Mm -hmm. where there are people that are going through problems. Like HR exists because the way the business operates on paper goes right out the window once you start having people do things. People, yeah. So a lot of my job is making sure that people feel good. Like, I think we've all had a job where Sunday night we started hitting Indeed because Mm. that job sucks. And I want to build a place where people can build the generational wealth that my students' families were missing Mm -hmm. and like be very comfortable doing it. So it's, it's just a continuation of the same service. Instead of students, I have employees. Instead of people's grades, I have their happiness, retention, wealth, Mm -hmm. and making sure that the business succeeds, you Mm -hmm. know? It's amazing how many times, like, if you treat people right, the business will succeed. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the biggest, like, that's the investment is in in the folks, because then they will show up Monday morning and not go on Indeed or not be sick. And, um, and, you know, 
that's one of the hardest things about leadership and management is giving those those employees and uh, you know your direct reports mm-hmm. the time and the like the true there's a, a um, radical candor and I don't remember the the author's name um, radical candor yeah wow. radical candor I, I think I can't remember I think I there was a podcast and then I think there was. I don't know if I have the book. Anyways, it's about caring deeply, but communicating honestly or something along those lines. Like that, mm-hmm. that was the bottom. And it was like, you had to build the relationships with, with your, your direct reports, but honestly and truthfully. And, mm-hmm. and then you also had to be candid when something was needed to change or improve or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, so, so to go into like employee psychology, su- success in leadership is divided into like three things. IQ, which is your technical ability to do the job. EQ, which is your emotional quotient. Like how do you respond to the emotions of your employees? Mm-hmm. And adaptability quotient, your AQ. So how well can you adapt to change? And if you focus too much on any one of those things, you'll falter. So what, what I find is that a lot of industries are starting to come to terms with the idea that it's sort of like the social emotional learning they did in city year, where if you tend to the people's emotions, they are given a platform to perform. Mm-hmm. Like you can't have someone succeed if they're working in a department where everyone's out for each other's blood with a manager that just push all tasks on their plate and takes all of their credibility. Like no one can mm-hmm. thrive there. Right. So the EQ is important, but the AQ, like the ability to adapt, like um, in my industry is very turbulent right now because it got very affected by COVID. Um, now there's staffing shortages. We rely on people in the trades. And also we're all going through corporatization. Mm. And that requires adaptability. You can have someone that's really good at their job and like the best emotional manager ever, but like if you can't adapt to that, then... It's different. So those are my three new KPIs. Instead of like scores on standardized tests or like attendance KPIs, it's become how do I make sure these people can survive? That's a pretty large task. Yeah. <laughs> how, how do you like what's your self care as far as like keeping you strong? Because, you know, you somebody brings on like, I have a friend who's a, a therapist and we get mm-hmm. together every couple months or so. And I just flat out asked her, I was like, how do you deal with this? I mean, people are going through a lot of shit yeah. and like, like that. I I have an interview that I think is coming out next week. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I use time because I don't know when this podcast is coming out. <laughs> Anyways, it's coming out with Christy Heine. And on that, she talks about how she's a, a coach. And I said how, I tried to be a coach for a little while, but I was so um, invested in people following mm-hmm. through on their dreams and and what they wanted to do that I, I actually had to not, I had to back off a little bit because like Addie, if you were like, well, I want to run a marathon and I was like, oh, you could totally do it. And like you start I training cannot. and then- <laughs> I sit oh, in great. this chair all day. <laughs> I know, I know. Trust me, my 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 abs are like yeah. There are no lower abs in this body yeah. anymore. You sit in your chair. But anyways, how do you how, how do you kind of self care with that kind of responsibility? It's something I'm still learning. A lot mm. of the people I work with uh, call me out. Like one person said, "Addy, you're a bit of a workaholic." And I said, "Why?" And she said, Monday morning, you messaged me saying, you'll be damned if you have an unread email at 7 a.m. And I was like, okay, that's a good yeah. call. <laughs> but it's 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 something that I'm learning. But at, at the same time, I have a sick obsession with HR. Mm. I have very high goals for my career. Like I want to be the head of the NLRB and like be able to do stuff with employment law. But okay. Like, um, what is NLRB? Of, I don't know what that is. Uh, National Labor Relations Board. Okay. They do all federal labor law. Um. So a lot of my time, I'm just focusing on. I'm thinking a lot about HR. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking a lot about employee psychology, or I'm thinking about people that I know are getting burnt out, and like what changes we can do to make sure they're motivated. Because for me my greatest joy 
is giving my 350 employees joy mm. and making sure they thrive and they're not financially screwed. And <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work, but at the same time, it gives me so much reward that I don't mind getting in hand-to-hand combat with Excel on a Saturday, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, um, but other ways I self-care, um, I'm very into everything Japanese, very admittedly. So I've got swords, watch a lot of anime, Japanese cooking, study sake, just things I'm interested in. Nice. So I'm trying to get better at it, but in, in city year, I didn't have it because I took mm-hmm. all of it home with me. Mm-hmm. And I also like um, had some undiagnosed mental stuff going on, didn't find the right medication. And now I'm stable, but back then, like I, I was not, and I took a lot of it with me. Mm-hmm. And I remember Martin Luther King Day, uh, the day of service. Uh, it was t- 2018, yeah, January 2018. We had to do all of these murals um, in this school. It was a big school. Like they had multiple indoor pools that we had to paint oh, and like all <laughs> these other things. And um, I put myself through undergrad doing photography. So I was tasked with going to, first of all, taking pictures of the entire thing for our social media, but then taking pictures of every individual mural to build a catalog for future schools. And that was an 18 hour day for me. And I remember being the last one to leave and I got in my car and I called my mom and I bawled because I was just so tired. Yeah. And I feel a lot of people that are in AmeriCorps go through that same mental break at least once Mm -hmm. where they're like, I can't believe I'm doing this much work for this little money. And it's, it's all ends at some day. There's nothing to build on top of this. It just ends. Yeah. So it, it, it builds the intrinsic motivation because extrinsic, you're not going to get many awards except for the Ed award. At that time, it means $21,000. You could have made more grilling at McDonald's. And like, you you can't really take it with you. So it's, Mm -hmm. what do you get out of it while you're there? Mm -hmm. And there was this amazing analogy that I heard at City of Milwaukee. I think it was Paola that said it. Paola, if you're listening, I miss you. Um, She said there, like, you, you have a plate of breakfast. You have ham and eggs. Like, the eggs didn't have like you didn't have to end a chicken's life for the eggs the eggs will always come the ham had to give up their life for that Mm -hmm. and like there are people that don't put in their all and there are people that put in their all both of them make a great breakfast but which one do you want to be and there were some people that didn't want to give their all and honestly they probably had a better time mental health wise in AmeriCorps (laughs) but but I wanted to give it my all I was like I'm gonna choose as much of this as possible and I, not, not to sound like Robert Frost, but that made all the difference. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think that also the time, the time in your life is also just who am I, what am I doing? You know, you also took some time to try to figure out what your next steps were. So it wasn't just mm-hmm. going through a service year. It was also adulting and, and learning, like, what do I want to do with, like, what do I do? what am I doing? Um, you know, I went through my service in Milwaukee. (laughs) Why am I in Milwaukee in January? I mean, let's talk about that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, you come from Connecticut. So (laughs) I remember the the second winter I was here, it got to negative 60 for two weeks. My God. I would go outside and I could feel my nostrils freeze up. That's insane. That is not okay. That is not okay. Yeah. Um, Wow. Um, that's so, I just really love how you keep pulling the thread on how city year made such a, an impact in what you're doing now. And I also wanted to just hats off to you, um, because I feel like there's like a toxic self-care world out there where it's like, Mm -hmm. Oh, do you ever go get a pedicure, a pet, you know, Manny and a petty and go get a massage and like similar to you. I mean, not similar to you, but I find self-care in different ways, right? Like Mm -hmm. crazy moons behind me. I love astrology. Like I could sit 
a whole afternoon and and listen to astrology and you know just geek out on that kind of stuff and to me that's that's calming for my my nervous yeah. system and you know finding joy and beauty in Japanese culture and all of the things that you embrace to calm your nervous system um so all you folks out there whatever your self care routine is it does not have to be something even that you have to pay for, right? Like sometimes I just go and lay out in the grass, especially if I've been staring at the computer all day, I'll just go lay in the grass, honestly. (laughs) And I'm looking up at a tree that's like half dead and I'm like, please don't drop a branch on me. (laughs) Yeah, and I think my advice with self-care is like, if it feels good, don't feel guilty about it as long as it's not cool and doesn't hurt anyone. Like, um, yeah, I love Japanese stuff. Mm-hmm. Last night, I, me and my friend, we were in the backyard throwing apples at each other and taking turns swinging at them with swords. Oh my god. That's gosh. kind of cringe. That is so cool. Incredibly happy. And don't let I anyone else yell at me. If, you're, if your self care is just like getting on a stationary exercise bike for four hours, do it Peloton. and have a hell of a time doing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I'm a big fan about um, leaps of faith. Uh, I've taken many of them in my life. Um, sometimes there's a net, well, so I like to think about it this way. This is how I always, this is the analogy that I use. It's like walking across a river that's pretty calm and Mm -hmm. you're stepping and you can't see the stones, but you know, you know, there's going to be a stone there, but you just don't know if it's going to be sturdy, if it's going to be stable, if it's going to be slippery, if it's going to be big, if it's going to be something that you're going to have to jump many, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, I would step on a stone and it would be solid and big and I'd rest. And I would just kind of sit there for a while until I took my next step. And then my next step was, oh crap, I can't stay here for long. So then I have to take another step and it's like, that one's not safe either. And then I go to another big. So I kind of think they're leaps of faith, but they're like steps of faith and in, in, in the way mm-hmm. that I can see. When's the time that maybe with AmeriCorps service or just in your life in general that you just took a leap? I mean, going to Wisconsin from Connecticut's a pretty big leap, but. There were some you... leaps that really worked well and some where I fell completely flat on my face. Uh, leaps that worked well, coming to Milwaukee, getting into different grad schools, like applying for the job I have now where I'm doing all of my dream work that I've ever wanted to do. That's so, so cool. But then there's also been loose leaps of faith where like I, I moved out to Cleveland to be with that fiance. And then the next day they shut the state down for COVID and that was terrible. And there's been other leaps of faith where I'm like, okay, I'm going to get really involved in this thing and it doesn't work out or I get financially burned. And in each of those things, like I don't really have regrets about them mm-hmm. because yeah, it really sucked at the time, but by learning how to navigate that, it's made me an incredibly stronger person and businesswoman. Mm. So Good to know when you hit rock bottom when like every time you get low after that, you're like, ah, don't worry. I still have a job. I still have a house. Totally. I have loved ones. <laughs> yes. Like it's and, I don't know. Bright side. And I yeah, and I find that like sometimes it's easier to know what you don't want to know what you want. And, and there's a, an idea out there where appreciation is like, and satisfaction is one of the, like the higher vibration, if we want to go woo is like a higher vibration. If you can stay in appreciation, but not an appreciation, like you look at somebody's life and you're like, oh my God, I'm, I'm so appreciative of my house because they don't have a house. It's more of like, I'm really satisfied that I have a house and it feels good. Right. Like yeah. during COVID, I felt so extremely lucky with where I lived because I could go for a walk down to the water, right? Like I wasn't in a high rise in a building where they were saying, you can't leave your, your, your place. I was like, I had a backyard, you know? Yeah. And so like kind of staying in that, like, I'm appreciative and satisfied with what I have around me just makes mm-hmm. things a little bit more, a little softer. And those, so those leaps of faith that don't work out, it's like, I, it always makes the path more clear for me. Always. Mm-hmm. I'm like, now, now I know what I want and ha- and what I want to experience and what I want to feel. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's, I, I have had a life of self-discovery 
I am trans. <laughs> Life is self-discovery. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I'm trans. I, I went into like journalism and I was like, well, that sucks. And I got into HR wanting to do union work. It's life will throw you a lot of curveballs, but it's like, how are you going to react to it? You got to keep swinging. Yeah. Right. Or, or, or and read, start reading the pitches. Like, oh, <laughs> I am not even going to swing at that one because last time I did, like, I missed and I almost dislocated my arm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> there's been a lot of times where employees ask me to go the extra mile. And like, I have in the past on those certain things, but I'm just like, I've learned. <laughs> Please. <laughs> We're not going to do that. Thank you. Yeah. I remember this one time I referred somebody for a job and he, they were like my um, assistant coach. Cause I coached my kids in soccer and he was a good guy and whatever he showed up and he coached or whatever. And when <laughs> the business got back to me and they're like, did you know about his like history? I was like, no. And there was like a record of, <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to give too many details, but I was like, so that was the first time in life where I was like, okay, if I'm referring somebody for something or recommending something for something, somebody for something, that's my reputation as well. Right. So I have to think Mm -hmm. about like, what is that going to reflect on, on me with that going the extra mile for somebody, then you're like, why am I doing this for you? My, my second year of AmeriCorps, I referred someone that did not perform. That's the last time I referred someone for something. Yep. yep. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. I, I rem- So I referred my son for, um, I worked with Anne Arundel County Recreation and Parks for, that's where I did my service year. And then I continued to stay on and work with them here in Maryland. And then he was of age, I think he was 16. He started volunteering with them when he was in middle school. And then when he was 16, he could get hired. I put my name out there for him. And I was like, yeah, you know, da, da, da. And I looked at him and I said, don't fuck this up. <laughs> And he did it. I mean, he, he, he's still performing amazingly. And I was just, he really rose to the ranks and rose to everything. It was, was good. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, One more kind of woo woo question. Um, Synchronicities, like let's pull out one or two synchronicities that you're like, what is that? Like synchro, like, wait, I'm not an emotional person. These are new words to me. Oh, oh, this is so fun. (laughs) I love it. So like synchronicities are almost like deja vus or like, like you met somebody and, and they're still impacting or doing something like, let me think about it. Like Mm -hmm. I have synchronicities all the time in my life that like my whole life is synchronicity. (laughs) I had one recently in February that I'm very proud of. So my first like HR, HR job. I was hired as a temp in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, at this manufacturing company that made uh, building materials, like siding, windows, roofing, et cetera. And uh, I started off as recruitment and then I moved to COVID tracking. But in recruitment, there was this director of talent acquisition. If he's listening, Mm. he knows who he is. And he left just such a lasting impact on me the way he was approachable, how he emotionally reacted to stressful situations, how he very much valued my opinion, even though I was just some temp, you know? Mm, mm -hmm. And I, I held on to that for a very long time. And last month, earlier this month, recently, I hired my first ever direct report. Oh, And I texted him and I said, Hey, Thank you for being awesome. I just hired my first direct report and I'm trying to act the way you acted with me. Brought him to tears. But it's like, I yeah. have had all of these great leaders in and outside of AmeriCorps. A lot of them are still in AmeriCorps. I still talk to them. That's so cool. But it's it's just emulating. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. Uh, in, in February, I was in Cleveland, um, the connecting flight didn't make it. I got stuck in Philadelphia. I had to drive back. Whoops. So I had breakfast with him. At That's one of my so cool. Diners that was right next to where I lived. And I was just like, hey, this is what I'm doing now. This is really cool stuff. He was telling me about stuff that's going on in his life. He's doing consulting. And it was wild that it in the span of like a couple years, 
we went from like me being his direct report just some temp to us having an open conversation about Peers, almost, HR, yeah. yeah, strategies, stuff like that. And I don't know. People That's people cool. make lasting impacts. Yeah. And, and it's wild because it happens enough to you that you try to emulate that. And then people start individually coming to you saying, Oh, you made a difference in my life by doing this. And mm-hmm. I paid it forward in this way. Yes. And that's badass. That's that seven gera- generation stuff that city. Yes. About. I love, oh my gosh, look at you dropping the bombs of city year all the time. <laughs> I forgot which PITW it was, but there's one that is city your eyes, everything. And that's important. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's they're so right. Good. They're right. That's so cool. I, folks, city year did not sponsor this um <laughs> this podcast but maybe i'll reach out to them and see if they want to I don't know, <laughs> throw a sponsorship in here or something to give addy an extra jacket i don't know i finished um, five years ago and i'm still ranting about it that's so cool that, I, I think that that actually is a really good place for us to wrap things up um just sure. i think you did a full circle here with everything and um and again <clears throat> like city year if you're I'm definitely, I definitely know some city year people out there. So I'm going to be like, Hey, here's a podcast. Um, so the final question that I always like to ask all the AmeriCorps alum that are on this podcast. And and again, there's so many of us out there and it's, I literally am like interviewing one or two AmeriCorps alumni a week and then putting out one podcast a week. So, um, definitely go back and listen to, to some of the earlier episodes. Um, but what do you, what do you see for the alumni network doing on either a grand scale or a regional scale or a local scale? What, what do you think we could do? Well, to bring it back to that ham and eggs analogy, okay. there are a lot of hams that are hidden everywhere. And <laughs> the alumni network is just all of these little co-conspirators mm. that are making little changes in their little part of the world. Yeah. And I think it'd be very interesting to take more of a collectivist approach. And that starts with networking, being like, okay, I'm an alumni in HR. There's got to be more. Yes. Too many transferable skills. You're going to work in a school and then not explore learning and development as a career. Mm-hmm. So I think just having them all work together and doing stuff like this, where we say, we are from all of these different backgrounds, industry speaking and life speaking but we had these shared experiences Mm -hmm. and molded that clay into whatever this is. Mm -hmm. Like I took hanging out with kids to head of HR, no connections there, but you dig deeper and you realize it's all the same stuff. Exactly. So the alumni network needs to conspire together to make. I love that. And I love the word conspire. So, you know, and one of the, on Chrissy Heine's podcast and I, at the very end, we were like, let's have a mastermind because we were talking about some other woo woo stuff. Um, And this might be something that would be interesting to do is to hold a, a zoom call with all the folks, all the alumni folks, maybe not all, I'd have to upgrade my Zoom account. Big call. Um, city year, if you want to support me, <laughs> my, my <laughs> Zoom account. So we just, but maybe it's something like that. Like, hey, if you're listening to this and you're interested in connecting with Addie and, and learning from her and learning from others in your field that have a shared experience of AmeriCorps, let's get together sometime in September or whenever HR folks look at their policies and procedures and think through things. And let's just, because we're coming to the table with that shared experience of national service. So even though we didn't do service year, we are all, we're coming with the same sort of principles in is mission bigger than ourselves. I'm going to get yeah. that quote down. I'm going to write it down. Um, so, so I love that idea. I, I think that's like a, a doable thing. You know what I mean? Like we could just throw that out on LinkedIn and be like, yeah. Hey, if you're available, <laughs> um, Addie's going to drop some blast it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Addie's going to drop some HR bombs on us all. <laughs> <laughs> and Nikki's going to talk about the moon. <laughs> <laughs> So this was so good. I love this conversation. And I know we had to reschedule from the other day. So I appreciate your, your grace with that. And is there anything, anything that you want to say just to wrap things up? Um, 
I think the last thing is I have the city year chance burned into my mind. And every morning while I'm brushing my teeth, I'm thinking G O O D M O R N I G. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. And it gets you hyped up. You have a good day when you think it. So I, so I love that. It was cringe when I was doing it, but now it's psychologically making me happy. So thank you. That is so cool. Thank you so much, Addy. This was such a fun conversation. And for all of you out there, thank you for making it this far. You're the end of the podcast team. Um, so I don't know, drop some into the po podcast love in emojis or whatever that might look like. And City Year, you've obviously made a huge impact. And I'm sure Addy is not the only one out there that is still singing their good, good morning chants. <laughs> They're brushing their teeth. So thank you all. And I'll look forward to having another um, alumni here at the AmeriCorps Alumni Connections. Take care.